This is our last case for the day. Uh, we hope uh, our cases have been wonderful. I want to thank my staff, everybody here at Advanced Cardiac and Vasco Centers, Dr. Bernstein, my partner, and everybody here has been wonderful. Uh, I'm going to dive into the case. Uh, thank you to the sponsor of this case, Philips. Uh, I'm going to show you the angiographic pictures of this case. This uh, gentleman is in his 60s, and he has a flush occlusion of his uh, SFA. And what I'm going to show you here is this fluoroscopic image of our anti-grade axis, where the needle is in, co in, in relationship to the common femoral artery. This is the angiogram. You really don't see a nub of the SFA. Uh, I show you the reconstitution within the popliteal artery, about the P2 segment of the popliteal artery, and uh, the final uh, angiographic picture uh, of the tibial vessels, not very good from above, but we already went ahead and obtained pedal access. I think everybody saw pedal access today enough, so we went ahead and got pedal access. And our plan is to perform an assisted TAMI, meaning delivering therapy via pedal access uh, and short access from above. If you guys can, Jihad, are you able to see the angio, by the way? Yeah, Fadi, everything is uh, shown well. So okay. go ahead. Can you guys show the extravascular ultrasound, please? Beautiful. Okay, so this is the integrate access. What you see at 7 o'clock is the femoral head. This is a four French sheath. And what we're going to do is uh, go ahead, Rick, advance the Navy Cross. So this is under ultrasound guidance live. We're going to dim the lights a little bit. Go ahead, Rick, advance. My cursor is where I want you to pull back. Okay. So what we see, what you see, stop there. What you see is the Navy Cross inside the sheath. And remember, this is a flush occlusion. Our sheath is in the profunda. Go ahead, Rick, and pull the sheath over the Navy Cross slowly. And we're pulling the sheath while we're keeping the navy cross inside the leg there. Keep pulling on the sheath, keep pulling, keep pulling, good. Now stop there. Uh, I have an 018 V18 wire inside the, the navy cross catheter. Go ahead and pull the navy back slightly. So, Fadi, uh, are you trying to engage the ostium of the SFA under ultrasound? Under ultrasound, Jihad, I cannot do it under fluoroscopy because, as I showed you, uh, the, the, the flush occlusion there. So we're trying to engage it under ultrasound guidance. It might be a little bit challenging, but we're going to try. Keep pulling the sheath back. That's really beautiful, actually. A very good idea uh, to do that. Uh, Dr. Walker, would you have done this up and over, or would you have done it integrate? Yeah, I would have done this up and over. But I, often, even when there's no nub, if we lead with a straight wire, it will find the straight continuation of the Pull your sheath back femoral, a little bit, advance the navy wire. The superficial femoral, and we Pull often find back. even, Stop we'll there. go to ultrasound if that doesn't get us beyond the nub. I like the idea of approaching this from above, though, because it is quite, so slowly quite advance easy to get subminimal weight below and advance dissect the above a little bit, the origin. Especially, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is, this is a case so, that I think approaching from above, if you have to come from below as well, it's good, but you have to protect the ostium. Uh, area to not dissect. Above Did we the pop into the uh, Absolutely, it doesn't okay. have much of a Hold on, pull room. Back. Hey, hey, Fatty, how do you know where the nub is by ultrasound? I, I'm having difficulty uh, seeing jihad, where can you, can you show? Can you show Jihad the, the nub there? You I'm know, showing it right uh, there. We're engaging I am it. not going to show Dr. Adam where the I, I, <laughs> The SFA is so big. I mean, you can close your eyes and see it. How do you know it's not the yeah, profunda? There's no nub, uh, George. It's uh, actually flush occlusion, but where the tip of the wire is, uh, is in the CTO itself. And um, this is actually, so he, the ultrasound tech is, rotate, is rotated the probe. And if, if they can hear me fairly, they can rotate away and show us the profunda if you can open it up like a fork. So actually, that would actually show so everybody. I don't know if we're able to show it, but we're engaging it with our wire. Is that the profunda or the wire SFA? Is that's the SFA. The, you that's know, George, what you see on uh, top is the SFA. So if you rotate right the there, see the, the, the flashing way, around. of the wire? That's the SFA. Yeah. Okay. Take off your hand pen a little bit. So the, the CTO okay. cap Fetty, is convex. Uh, this most complex CTO cap. It's not an, e an easy CTO cap. And, um, it's, uh, it's concave from above. Is it concave? Okay. And, uh, from above, based on the ultrasound at least, it's concave. So we're trying to uh, see if we can engage it. 
Um, Dr. Bradman, would you use a different wire, um, like a CTO wire, high gram tip wire? Um, to be honest, no. Uh, I mean, uh, also being in Europe, uh, more and yeah. more uh, assessing if I can this engage with sound the... guided approach in CTOs, just to come from above right and uh, not come from below in such a in such a lesion. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So integrate and and more and more uh, approaching doing this the same way. Okay, Jared. I don't know if you were able to see on Flora what I did. But I, and we're going back to ultrasound. Can you guys show ultrasound? Would you go up and over? I would just, uh, I'm, I'm a little more comfortable with up and over. I like to have a little more running room. Um, but I think it's whatever you're comfortable with. I think in this particular case, I don't think there's a disadvantage uh, from going in either direction, going up and over versus going integrate. I think if, I, if you didn't have the off grid access, probably would not be a good idea to just go and integrate. That's, that's probably what you're relying on, right? Um, the cross from here and uh, from Like below. I said, you had, this, is an assisted, this is an assisted TAMI, so what, we're, we're, what I'm depending on here is just to help me cross the proximal cap of a CTO, which quite frankly we achieved right now, yes. because uh, Ben's gonna switch, switch to short axis, he's gonna show us our relationship to, to the vessel, if we're subintimal or we're in the true lumen, even so, if, even if so, so what, ben is, what Ben is saying, what Ben is saying is we're just uh, uh, basically hugged to the outside of the vessel. Obviously, we're going to confirm with Ibis, but we'll see. And you know, if you increase the loop a little bit on the wire and rotate the cathode, see if you can free yourself back into the lumen. So, so um, Jihad, real quick. That's question. exact. That's exactly what we're doing right now, Jihad. So, can you tell where you went to the submental plane? The thing I'm worried about, you're going to jeopardize that profunda. So, at this point in time, would you just go ahead and switch your access and get in true lumen? Because if you're in a submental plane up where the profunda is. Totally yeah. agree with you, George. That's what he's going to try to do, and then come from below, and then the entry point from right. below has to be off, yeah. sort of like uh, near the near the profunda, so you can actually push things away if you need to. So he's, he's not going to so be So look where we today. are, guys, here. No. Uh, we are already up to the mid-SFA, very tight uh, there. And I already have a Navicross catheter from below. Uh, at the distal CTO cap, I have an 018 command wire. And uh, we're going to advance the Navicross catheter. And we're going to do this fluoroscopically, because I know people would like to see that, too. This is really nice, Fatty, what you showed us so far, uh, how you maneuvered the flush occlusion uh, with ultrasound guidance and fluoroscopy. And uh, Fatty, why and, uh, are you looping the wire? Can you tell us why you moving with a looped wire instead of a straight wire? Yeah, so, so uh, can you have the trucker, please? So uh, this concept of a Ginelli uh, a loop, where it keeps the, actually the, the tip of the loop tight, narrow so this way it's it's helpful in terms of maintaining us within the true lumen of the vessel so i'm just uh, supporting my 018 wire with my navicross catheter so it's interesting patty you're, you're starting with a loop so i never start with a loop um, i always start with a straight wire a cto wire 014 platform and the reason I do that is because your risk of going out, um, there's, a, there's a possibility you could go out uh, with this loop, even if it's tight, with an 035 platform. If you do it, then sometimes you ruin your chances of crossing. So that, that, that's just another perspective. Uh, great point, George. I, uh, I, I agree. Uh, how, however, you know, it really also depends on how, how the wire and uh, the catheter are behaving. So, uh, so far, not meeting a lot of resistance, which is a good thing. Um, and I'm just uh, looping the wire. Yeah, keep going, Fatty. Just as long as uh, it's going, keep going uh, with that loop till you uh, enter the SFA. Uh, it's going to take you into the common femoral. But, you know, if there's any... Well, Jan, I think I am him. crossing to... Uh, We're worried if there's any subintimal entry at the ostium, that's all. 
Yeah, so, uh, Jihad, can you repeat that point? That's a, that's a salient but very important point. People think that if you're anti-grade, uh, that you've got the profunda protected. And you mentioned having to enter, you have to be very close to the profunda, that way that you, uh, you get plaque shift lateral, or I'm sorry, medial so to where you're going to be, and this. therefore you don't obstruct the profunda. Yeah, that, so that's what we're going to try to do here. So look, notice how the catheter is, an, uh, is close to the profunda from above. So we need to have the same thing from below, so when fatty goes to stand or tree, we don't spill anything into the profunda. And the profunda is diseased and can't afford anything to go wrong here. Fatty, Let's Brian Fisher here. Just real quick, uh, so you chose a V18 from above and a Command 18 from below. Is there any rationale for doing that? Yeah, the V18 wire is really a very nice wire. I just like the... Uh, V18 is a very nice wire for trackability and support, so I needed something that I can shape the tip, but it's a supportive body. The command wire is much more difficult to destroy, so I needed something to put up with the beating from below. Um, one thing I, I did differently here, let's see if we're, yeah. we're far from each other. Possibly are. So one thing also we can do is you can always move the catheter back and forth if there is a plaque in between. Advance it, Rick, if you can mind. Yeah. So we're just kind of trying to break. Yeah, stay there. Trying to say uh, to see if we can break a, a plane between us. You can actually be in the true lumen from above and below, but you have plaque in between. That clearly we can see with with ultrasonography. Can you show us that, Fatty? Can you tell us if you're in, because that's my biggest concern is that Profunda, jeopardizing the Profunda, can you use ultrasound to your advantage to show that you're where you need to be either above yeah, or from we'll, below? Yeah, we'll show you. We'll uh, show you in one second. Fatty, I think, you're I think absolutely we're right. the same. There, there is something between your catheters and the wire. Absolutely. So either do a big rotation up and below without the wires or um, use ultrasound, either way. yeah, excellent. See how we're, we're moving each other here? We're just, uh, again, I'm just trying to break it. Keep, keep going up, it's kind of breaking you free into the, hopefully the profound, the coming from around. There you go. No, we're, we're in this, I think we're in the same plane, guys. Uh, just uh, give me one second here. I have an 018 yeah, wire, so go. Pull, pull, pull your Navi back. Stay there. Hey guys, can I have an 014 command, please? He needs to turn his catheter to the left. Yeah, our left. The ca uh, yeah, that catheter yeah, coming from above. No. Have them yeah. both go lateral, maybe. Oh, here it is. So see how the mic, my wire is touching the catheter. See that? It should, it should enter it by now. That? We're just concerned that maybe there's still something in between them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to an 014 wire here just to, because it might be easier. That Fetty, might be the case. I'll continue to do that. But as you're switching the wire, can Ben show us an ultrasound, um, the entry point of the anti-grid catheter? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll show you that. I'm, we're quite confident that I am through the osteum, the true osteum of the SFA. Okay. Because we saw it under ultrasound. So, so it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was not a concerning point for us. But uh, we'll show you that. And what do you think? Uh, okay, I have an 014 command wire here. Let, let's start with George uh, and Brian. Which atherectomy would you use based on the ultrasound so far? So the only atherectomy I would use would be um, a laser in this because we're in a subintimal plane. Um, is it because it's subintimal or? Okay. That's the only reason. Brian, what about you? Would, I, would, I would echo the same thing. I'd probably use laser, but I'd want to confirm it. I'd wait until we uh, see it under intravascular ultrasound uh, to be completely sure. I think that'll give you the best resolution as far as uh, plaque morphology and then also location. Fatty, Fatty, I think you're in a subintimal plane. You may want to just take a balloon down there and just finish straight the two lumens. It, Maybe ultrasound will show us uh, differently. Yeah. Oh, we'll see, see your, wi see your wire, when you wire taken from above. You're in a subintimal plane. You're in two different planes. And uh, that's a common thing to see in this kind of CTOs. I mean, this CTO is not actually by any means friendly. It's an extremely complex CTO. 
Absolutely, you've done a great so job. So all question. I'm doing here is I'm rotating the catheter from above. Again, I'm trying to create a plane. If that doesn't work, then we'll go with the uh, George idea. I, th I so think these that's are very the steps reasonable. That you want to go through. But the other thing would be to consider just a high penetrance wire here. You know, a wire like a Halbert wire or something that would give you good penetrance. When these two cool catheter there. tips are close to each other, uh, you can tark that pretty well. It has excellent Keep penetrance. Pulling. And I think you would probably reconnect the dots. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. A lot of great points here, but just to emphasize too, this is a very technically difficult case. You know, there are lots of ideas being put out there, but this is something that, you know, this is very complex. Uh, Fai, you're doing a really nice job so far. We underestimate the thickness well, and the difficulty you, of crossing a elastic, elastofabaric uh, cap. I'd rather have a calcific cap, actually, than elastofabaric cap. Uh, Mary Marianne, uh, would you add anything else to Fai to help him out? I mean, I would ask for what you asked for, uh, before, just to give us an ultrasound image from, from outside uh, and to have maybe more Fair information the um, what's going on there at, the, at this spot where he's not able to enter the guide wire, what's between the two catheters and the guide wires, so. Yeah. We saw we, when, uh, the, when they showed us cross-section, there was, Let me bring the you know, high. What do you call it, black or a, a, a block? Maybe this helps yeah, us a little look. bit about the... Uh, you can see they're, yeah. they're a bit yeah. apart yeah. here. Two different uh, locations. So, so you're so in two sub planes? Let me show you. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I think we're in the true lumen from below. I think we're in the true lumen from above. Do you guys see that? Jihad, can you point out uh, yeah. at 1 o'clock and at 7 so o'clock? Yeah, 12 o'clock and 7 o'clock, two catheters. But the flak burden that you have is so... So, so we're in the true lumen in both, in both yeah. vessels, see that? So, so you need to either bring loops from both anterior retrograde and just lacerate uh, the area that you're going to recross into, okay. or use the catheters to lacerate Top your way into, right there. or balloon Where? like George said. Okay, take off your hand. So Ben says we're on top of each other right there. Okay, let's try let's it there try. and see. That works. Uh, I like uh, uh, um, Dr. Walker had a great suggestion in terms of using uh, CTO wire. So what CTO wire would you guys like us to use? We can do that too. Oh, is that a, um, use your Z wire that you keep bragging about. Um, Z30, do <laughs> you have Z30? Toward me. Can I have an 014 uh, Z gram tip wire, guys, please? Give him the uh, highest 30. gram you have, guys, please. To explain for the Z wire. And then let me have a, a let me have a, a four O by a hundred O one four balloon. Tip. So anything thirty and above, we have forty as well, and we have George wires. So and in O one four platform. One four and yeah, we, this one is O one four. We also have O one eight. Yeah, but the uh, Zillion wires are O one four wires, CTO wires. Yeah, I really like a Halbert wire here, and I like it because it has great penetrance. But it also has Act One technology, and therefore it has phenomenal torque. And, out. and so you're trying to connect two yeah. areas, and you want all the torque. Uh, it also tends to not distort because of Act One technology, and therefore, if you get a little bit out, you don't destroy the tip. And I, I found that to be a superior wire in this case. Who, who makes it? Um, That's an Asahi wire. So what is it called? Halbert. Halbert. So, so there are new wires that they make for the periphery. All have a Roman name. So. Halbert, uh, the gladius was was the little short sword. Halbert was a spear, but they're all they're all meant to be tools to attack lesions. Let me have uh, the torker, please. All right, so we're taking uh, the 30 gram tip Z wire. So there I get subintimal. So I'm going to try to pull back here and see if I can break to the same plane. At least now you have the, hopefully the, the option to break the li little layer that we saw in the cross-sectional view between the two yeah. catheters and uh, penetrate into the... Agree, Jihad. Yeah, keep rotating. So while I'm doing this, I'm just trying to see if I can break to the plane of 
there. I'm meeting resistance there, so that's good. Oh, here you go. Good job. You guys see that? It took uh, 20 minutes to cross the CTO. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's why I don't use ultrasound. Uh, is, that, is, that, is, that a, is that a compliment? Is that a compliment? Yes, yes, it was a compliment from George. Laser opened. Is Fatty, that, I got uh, your back, man, don't worry. 150 shaft? Fatty, the, the CTO is about no, 40 the some. Uh, what's the length of your CTO? It's, about it's 40 centimeters? Go ahead, take the Navi out. Uh, the CTO is, uh, I would say, about. Uh, at least uh, four, 40 centimeters. You guys notice how the retrograde component of the CTO was much easier to cross. The integrated component was much harder to cross. But, so. but Jihad, I think I, I really would like to emphasize what uh, the esteemed panel has mentioned about the steps in terms of tackling, like the escalation strategy here. You know, do you do a wire, uh, do you do balloon angioplasty, reverse cart, using a CTO wire? Dr. Walker, that was a great point. Uh, thank you, because we do that quite a bit. Um, all right. Yeah, can I have uh, the Mongo wire? Thank you. Can you, uh, can you load the 4.0 balloon, please? That's a phenomenal wire if any so, of you have used it. The Mongo has a built-in a short area so that it prolapses. It's, it doesn't destroy the tip, and it's Let's really very nice. Let's do the IVIS after. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to exchange to uh, the Mongo, wi Mongo wire, and uh, the staff keeps making fun of me. They want me to say Mango. Do you have, I'm going to take more wire. Uh, no, we're going to IBIS first. We're going to exchange for the Mongo wire first. Why are you taking a balloon to exchange? Uh, you're going to take the balloon um, to the sheath? Is that yeah, why not? Okay, so you externalize the wire from below. Okay. Give us some tension on the wire. There you go. So the balloon is through and through Jihad. You can release the wire, uh, Rick. And uh, we're going to IVIS next to see, uh, to see where we are in relationship to the vessel. So, Fetty, let's see the worst case scenario that you go in and out of the uh, luminal, uh, true luminal space, and you're just sub I know, I know what I would do, but uh, I'll, ask your, I'll ask your panel. I know what I would do. I'm not going to say what okay, I'm going to do. Let's start with Dr. Sure. Walker, because he's done this more than all of us, and he's taught us all what to do. To start with, I really approve of using an IVIS here. When we started using IVIS, we really thought we understood yeah, vessel sizes angiographically. And what we found that is about half the time, yeah, secure, please. it totally changed our decision. It changed it either based on the size we used or the area we treated, because often there were lesions we did not expect. So I, I absolutely agree with doing that to start with. Uh, if you're going to debulk this, uh, I personally would use laser in this case because I do think there's some sub subminimal passages at certain points. I think it's probably, if we're going to use it, it's probably more forgiving in a subminimal space than other forms of atherectomy. Uh, but let's see what you have. That, those would be my what thoughts. What size uh, laser would you use? Uh, it depends on the size of the vessel here in just a so, second. So you will, and, not, you will not say a for see the I like that. Yeah, I, I want to see the size of the vessel. Should trick you to say a uh, size before we see the iris, but um, you didn't. Yeah. Um, Dr. Rodman? So, Papa Teal? You know, we don't have uh, that many iris usage in, in Europe, so, yeah. so one thing oh, is wow. that, that we help us with Papa ultrasound too. guided procedures so to get at least um, an idea, um, as Greg has, uh, Dr. Walker has pointed out what the vessel size is with regard to the adequate sizing. Uh, so this Property. is one tool we use more and more because IBIS and OCT is not that, that common. So we use ultrasound guided procedures from Property. outside. And with regard to ephrectomy, we use more and more laser. Because, laser. yeah, because it's forgiving if you are in the uh, supintimal space and, and it's, it's, it's very, very 
adopted technology. Now, Marianne, I didn't use Ibis so very much. We're, uh, sorry to interrupt you guys. We're still, I just want to show you that's Proctimal SFA there. I think we're still true lumen. Maybe we're going to get subentimal here. It looks like you went in no, no, a little true bit. True lumen. Uh, you no, went true lumen. Lumen. Okay. George, what do you think? <laughs> that, that means it's it's there's no, one spot along no, no, there. No. Dude. Look, look, it's look obvious, at, uh, look at the Entima, Media, and Adventitia guys. I think it's pushed out. You see it? Oh, we, yeah, we see it. We, we see that you're sub intimal, but we're going to let it go. <laughs> oh, God. Jihad, I mean, um, that how is how obvious by ultrasound. <laughs> How about now? Uh, Fetty, this looks great. But one thing that we notice here is that actually the, the SFA. And this is the common femoral artery here. Can you go to the center look? of Awesome. Fetty, so you SFA. cross it right in the center. So, Brian, you, f you feel good about this? Um, you know, that's still, so going right the center uh, of the vessel, yeah. you still have, whenever you actually treat and you do balloon angioplasty or potential stenting, yeah you run the risk of shifting that plaque right over Rick into the profundo, so that's um, the Rick point to run. Which, which laser would you choose right now to actually try to accommodate the central uh, crossing that Fed has tossed in? Lower which centers. laser? Uh, there's options uh, of different lasers. Let's do 40. So, 40. Uh, versus power pulse versus the, yeah, so you want to get, get the uh, rotational laser uh, 2.0, just the power pulse. And that allows you the opportunity to, uh, to rotate the catheter um, a full 360 degrees, correct? Yeah. Uh, it, but it's dependent upon how big a sheath you have. You have to have at least a six French internal lumen sheath. And I think you probably have that. Here, that, that SFA is really big. Yeah. It, you know, I was just looking at those fluids? numbers. That looked at least six, maybe bigger. It's big, but there's a couple of areas that looks like has some negative free modeling. I'm not sure. If you notice that, I did. I agree with that. Yeah, the popliteal, the popliteal measures at four millimeters in certain areas, but the proximal SFA at least between five and six. So, Jihad, what we're going to do right now is uh, something I do with most of my CTOs, especially the soft plaque CTOs, um, which is performing mechanical thrombectomy with the Aspire device. Uh, I know some people might agree or disagree with that, but uh, again, I keep referring to your paper with Dr. with Dr. Adams. No, not Dr. George, I don't think you were part of that one. I we think don't, Dr. No, Davis, he, uh, he was actually declined PR. it. Yeah. No, but I agree, I agree with what you're doing. I think this is, uh, this is a good point. And one of the things you showed, Fatty, was the characteristic of the plaque when you took that IVUS through there. And y'all have shown very eloquently that the, the characteristic of the plaque, especially in chronic total occlusions, has soft plaque in it. So using, you know, usually yeah, I balloon or use a small balloon or use um, anthrectomy first, and then I go in and take out the okay. soft plaque with um, mechanical thrombectomy as you are. So we're the, just aspirating right now. The multipurpose scatter that Fed is using is also rotating it as he uh, aspirates. So that sort of creates... And Jihad, a, we have a floss through the integrate sheath, so I'm able, I'm able to move all my equipment in a very nice fashion here. Someone is pulling you, Fed, as you rotate the catheter? Yeah, Dr. Bernstein is, is giving us tension on the wire. We like, we like how you retain uh, the multipurpose as you aspirate. So this is going to be a great from back to me. And hopefully you can get something to show us um, afterward. Fatty, just while you're working through this part, uh, you know, one of the reasons, uh, you know, I think everyone, most of the people up here are big uh, intravascular ultrasound believers and users. Um, one of the big arguments that I hear is that uh, IVIS takes so long to do. You know, besides the other, the other issues, it just takes such a long time to get the information. And I was speaking actually, George sitting next to me, and one of the things that we'd like to do, since you've got, uh, you've got two layer, areas of access and you've got single wire control, is you can run your IVIS catheter from above or from below on the opposite side of wherever you're treating. And that really saves, a, you know, saves quite a bit of time. Uh, and you can see your, see your results right away. You know, you, you, Brian, really I will tell you that point. we have timed it in our lab. It takes, it takes us, uh, and I'm not, seriously, I'm not exaggerating, it takes us 50 seconds. Because of with the Philips system, it's really integrated with, with the table, and it's a matter of pulling a catheter, hooking it up to the side of the table, and we have a, an, an iPad right there in front of me that I can actually manipulate and get my information right away. Absolutely. You have the system, Brian? Do you have the sentence, sentence, please? 
Do you have the same system in your lab? It doesn't quite look that nice, um, but it's, it's fairly close. Hey, Fatty, is there a reason you um, are doing thrombectomy from below, from a retrograde versus a antegrade? Well, I actually, I'm going to treat this patient completely from uh, via, via an assisted TAMI approach, which is basically uh, doing everything from below. Uh, so I'm doing thrombectomy, laser atherectomy, and balloon angioplasty via pedal approach. Well, I, and, li uh, I, li I know, like we this. Have a like what you're doing because you know uh, you still got the occlusion above, so you're actually there's like stagnant flow there, so you're not fighting stuff going downstream if you come from a retrograde approach. So, it's, it's so I like it. Thing. I think it's pretty intuitive and very short, very uh, logical the way you're doing it. it George, just a good I'm, point. You know, taking my time. Uh, Fatty, don't take your time too much because you only got like 29 minutes left. <laughs> I'm sorry, didn't I just cross the CTO in seven minutes? In 20 minutes. <laughs> and if it wasn't for Dr. He, Walker... You know what, George? He's just, not gonna, he's just not gonna give in. He's not gonna give me credit. I know it's a tough crowd, buddy. For Dr. Walker advising um, him. All right, so we have, we, have, uh, we have free flow through our Aspire device, and we're aspirating on the way out also. Um, and we're going to let the sheath bleed a little bit also. So for the people in the audience who don't know what this fire is, that gun uh, that the uh, technician are, is holding there, and what it is, it's a mechanical thrombectomy device. It holds a negative pressure. It's a lot different than a balloon thrombectomy device because it continues to hold negative it. pressure. can attach to any catheter um, and uh, is very cost effective and it works very nicely. Let's see. You know, George, it, it generates 600 millimeter mercury constantly and that is the beauty of it that's awesome if you put it in a stent that just got deployed it just sucks the stent into the catheter so you know that whatever is in the lumen yeah we're, we're good time, yeah. it will suck Thank it you. out so so Fetty, are you gonna show us bleeding or uh or just it's uh i actually made sure that there's bleeding from the sheath and uh, there's bleeding from the integrate sheath and uh, we're actually gonna, I, I chose, I don't know if the panel would agree with me or not, but I chose the turbo power for, reason, for two reasons, the turbo power 2.0 laser for two reasons here. Because I'm delivering therapy in a retrograde fashion, the rotational uh, feature of the device makes it very easy to advance the catheter. So in the popliteal, I'm not gonna rotate it per se, but in the SFA, I will. Because the popliteal is smaller, and uh, usually that works very nicely, Edward. Yeah. Now, we also have a fluid running through the integrate small sheath. So we have, we have uh, the laser, the, we have the saline going and an integrate in the integrate sheath, and we're delivering therapy in a retrograde fashion. Yeah, I agree with this totally. Okay, this. What, what he's doing here, I think, makes a lot of sense, and then the technique is, is crucial. Sure. Laser won't photoblate any quicker than a millimeter a second. That's the best we can hope for with this. So he's going to need to go slow. That, that's the, one of the keys. One of the reasons I like to use laser as a form of atherectomy is if I have a long occlusion, I actually come off of fluoro. And I simply advance this, the roto, because it goes pretty easily. I advance it off of fluoro and tap fluoro maybe every 15 or 20 seconds. That helps us decrease how much radiation exposure we have. And that's, that's something that we don't speak a lot about, but it's, old guys like me have lost a lot of our friends from radiation problems. And so I think it's one of the devices that lets us get away from um, a lot of radiation exposure. You know what, Dr. Walker? It's really a pleasure to have you on the panel because you really, uh, honestly, you really say these little pearls that a lot of us don't pay attention to. That's what we tell the fellows, advance it slowly, take a snapshot every 10, 15 seconds, exactly like you said. Can you use ultrasound here? Guys, oh, we're gonna show you under ultrasound. That's a great point. Let's have you Ben come. Can I have a 5-0 long, guys? Yeah, once we get to the SFA. So, um, the so we're, gonna show you, we're gonna show you laser atherectomy under EVAS. Okay. We're just gonna say that to Walker was saying that you can take your foot off the pedal, uh, <laughs> so you don't kill Dr. Bernstein who's next to the. Uh... As the as the radiation safety officer at ACV centers here, you're the only one that does not follow our recommendations. <laughs> 
So as you can see here, the device is being advanced. You can see the cavitation created by the device. Let's rotate it now, Tim. Yeah. So we're going to start rotation because... Based, yeah, Patty, based on the physics, Dr. Walker was going to give you a comment on uh, cavitation. So do you agree with this cavitation that you see? Yeah, well, cavitation is part of what, what we get here, and it's a, it's a function of there's an acoustic shock wave that's emitted with each of the pulses of the laser. So we adjust two settings. One is frequency, that's how many pulses we give a second, and the other is uh, fluence, which is how much energy we give per pulse. And the higher the fluence, the bigger the cavitation bubble ultimately. But what happens with this, the very first thing is an acoustic shock wave that comes out of the laser. That's now been quantified and actually has been shown to affect rigid deep structures. That's how this works to help expand stents that are underexpanded. So, so you're saying basically based on what you just said, based on the physics of this, that it should go slower right now to get more luminal gain. Based on the physics of laser, the slower you go, the bigger will be the lumen. I'm not sure. sure if you heard that, Fatty. It's not me. It's Dr. Walker saying that. Look, guys, I think it's an important point in that, you know... You know, ne next year, guys, Dr. Mustafa will be doing the live cases. That's it. I'm going to be... Much, I'm Fatty, that's be much better. You see the now the entire lumen is filling, and you're going to get more um, developing than um, Speedy Gonzalez movements. So, Jihad, would you agree that, you know, trying to rush through these complex cases and trying to do them quickly, that's when bad stuff happens. So no matter what atherectomy device you're using, um, you're better off to go slow and be deliberate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, the sad thing is that uh, Fatty and I wrote the paper together, go slow to finish fast uh, for atherectomy. Mm -hmm. When you go fast, you embolize, uh, they sack to perforate, etc. Right, so, that is true for all forms of atherectomy, but it's particularly true here. In most other forms, you can go a lot faster than a half a millimeter a second or a millimeter a second. But what you can do is if you just simply monitor your hands, you stay off floor road and go very slow. Fetty usually goes very slow, probably he has a little more so he can catch up. But still doing really well. So Fetty, we want to see the osteum under ultrasound if possible because we, are, we want to see if the profunda... Stop. Ben, can you show us the osteum about, can you come back and show us on the ultrasound? Ben. Hey, Brian, this is what you're concerned about. So hopefully here you can see that the laser um, will reduce the uh, burden of the light. You, you know, uh, Jihad, I mean, I want to point out also that integrated access here is important because if I end up having a complication or I end up, uh, you know, embolizing to the profunda, we have access to the profunda here if we need to do something. Um, we, we have enough room to be able to do that. So. Um, you know, my sheath is, uh, the tip is in the SFA, and I'm sorry, in the column femoral artery, and you can see the laser bear activated, please. What do you guys think? That's very nice. You see that, Brian? You I mean, the, the profunda is in the bottom part, so it's protected. And Stop. So, uh, really excellent job, Fatty. Uh, the question and, actually. And, uh, I hope I convinced you with the IVIS that we went through the through the middle of the SFA under ultrasound guidance there. No, and, no. Uh, you have not convinced us, but we're moving on though. Really, really, that does not look like it's in the middle. Yes, Dr. Walker, what do you think? I do think it's in the middle, and I think his wire movement looked like it was in the middle as okay. well. I agree. I agree with what he okay, said. Okay, Brian, what do you think? And the boss has spoken, so it's in the middle. Look. George. No, no, I agree too. I got a question for Craig. Craig, quick question. So, if what do you think would happen, thinking outside Follow the it. box, if you were coming from a retrograde approach, just like this case, if you injected some dye in that chronic total occlusion? No, this is a, this is a serious question. Um, not I'll tell you exactly. Is that, you know, would you debolt better, and could you go a little bit faster? But you're protected because you don't have to flow from above. What are your thoughts? Uh, you, no. you would have a bigger percussive wave, of course, but that might result in perforations and it might result in dissections. I don't think I would do that here. I would do it in an underexpanded stent. Let's say there was a stent that was in there and they could never fully expand it. That's where I think I would use that because then you could, you could seal that. But he's done a, a remarkable job so far. This is really nice. Uh, I like the fact that he's going to deploy stents from below. We typically can yeah. can very accurately deploy the distal end of a stent better than a proximal end. Uh, this he's really put on a nice demonstration of how this works. Maybe the last ultrasound that uh, Ben ran, ran down the SFA looks extremely beautiful. I mean.
they really did a good job here debulking the uh, SFA. And uh, this yeah. sequential bullion energy capacity is probably going to give us the uh, what appears to be a negative video model vessel, maybe just the basic spastic for the current conclusion. You know, one of the things we're starting to learn more and more is that all these forms of atherectomy actually do modify deeper plaque, too. You know, initially we thought it was all that what we removed or just the surface tissues. But here you have a deep wave. Uh, CSI has shown some issues deeper. And so I think we're, we are starting to see maybe some effects uh, on the media as well as on the intimal calcium. Would you guys like to see an angio picture before the balloon? Yes, please. The audience said yes as well. So, um, Go ahead. Let's show them. The you insisted. So in case we have embolization to the profunda, we should know about it or sooner rather than later. Okay. Did, did you just okay, come back to me again, Fatty? Is that what you had the catheter up? Yeah, we did. We did. We did another run. Good. Quick run, like the like the trial suggested. You had the only thing we're not doing is the blood pressure cuff. Ready? All right. That's it. You're not gonna show us distal, <laughs> the popliteal, maybe. So what do you think? Do you have that's wow. the re-entry point right there at the proximal segment of the SFA? That's where you want to sub into more. That's the boss spoken, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay. In the true room. No, part of the, no, boy, part of this was, was subminimal. We said that before, but he was asking common femoral and origin. And he's beyond the origin in the lumen here. I, yeah, I, think, I, I think that's very different than if you're subminimal at the origin, because then right. you really risk losing the profunda. He's moving. Oh, you just the nice it. thing when he goes to deploy a stent here is that it was uh, steep accelerable bleak, probably 45 degrees. And Great point. A lot of people don't want to do that, so and they miss the osteum bad. Yeah. Uh, the, you can see here. So the this is uh, if we need to stent, and probably uh, probably we're going to go ahead and stent here if if you guys think it's necessary. Uh, I would like to do it under ultrasound guidance. So this way we'll show you how we can flare it in the common femoral artery and, uh, and pull it into the osteum of the SFA. Hey, hey, that would be great. Uh, if you haven't seen that performed uh, for the audience, who have not seen that, this is one of the best features you can actually take away, take home with you. Stunts. You can see exactly the stent, uh, whether oh, it's opposing the vessel, the vessel walls, and also you can see uh, how much obstruction of the profunda there is. So you can pull no, back French. until the profunda is free. And given that he has integrated access, he can also inject contrast as well and see how far away from the front he is. Betty, what kind of balloon do you have in there? This is a nanocro Nanocross, guys, right? Nanocross 50014 system and 50 by 200, uh, 220, sorry. And uh, I, was, I made the comment earlier that, you know, when it comes to CLI work, especially with the TAMI, you want to really depend on 014, 018 systems. I'm just going gently up, guys. Uh, I'm at four atmospheres so far. And uh, yielded nicely. Maybe this area in the middle did not, but uh, uh, 150, but don't open it yet. 150. Yeah, just don't, don't open it yet. Down from six. And that's the beauty of flossing because uh, you get to move things without uh, worrying that much. I think we're good. Uh, we're maybe a little bit lower to the P2 segment. And I would like to see, I go usually up to one to two atmospheres to see where the areas of resistance. So, uh, so far we're good here. We have, 15, we have 15 more minutes, so hopefully we'll get to show you the final result. Uh, 
Uh, question Jihad, uh, what would the panel think about the use of uh, uh, drug coded technology here? Okay, let's we'll start with Dr. Walker and Dr. Broadman. Actually, Dr. Broadman, will you tell us what you thought on using drug coded balloon here or stand? Um, we would do a drug coded balloon anyway as a first line procedure. So we never have changed in Europe considerably our approach. In some countries, it was a little bit difficult. But um, we just stick to drug coded balloons. We still believe in this kind of technology, at least, at least for above the knee disease. So this would be our final approach. And then if there is some mechanical issue, like you know, a section of what the residual stenosis would maybe uh, place a bare metal stand, a short one. So this is this. Dr. Walker, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I, I'm not at all convinced that there's a true mortality signal. I think that was very poor science the way that it was worked up. It was on intention to treat analysis. And patients who Don't got it, who got the drug, but uh, it wasn't intended, caused no problems. I mean, there's so many issues, so many flaws in, in that analysis that uh, I think that should have been accompanied by an appropriate editorial. And it, they just didn't have time to do it. I speak to all my patients first. I do tell them that there's been can you guys, a reported. Uh, can you guys show Jihad? I want to show you, yeah. uh, I know you like when I do this. This is positile blood flow. God, why don't you just bleed him to death? <laughs> uh, I just, I just, I, I know you love when I show, when I do that. So I just want to show everybody. You know, actually that's against uh, the law. So you, if we need to s you and Dr. Plague is going to go to jail one day because <laughs> of that. Uh, great, that's on camera. But so anyway, I, I have the job. discussion about a drug coated balloon and I make sure my patients are okay with it, but I, I also treat first with a drug-coated balloon, almost always. Can I have a short 6-0? 6-0 by like 60 or 80 stent? Yeah. Dr. Mustafa, so just to be clear, think? is there any role for a plain old balloon angioplasty in the SFA uh, in this day and time with what we know? Uh, 80. Oh, God, no. Just for this length, uh, the risk to know is, is going to be, no, no. Well, I agree with uh, Dr. Broadman. Yes, I think this is a good one where you would use Dracota balloon Pretty. in areas that recoil is not an issue, no dissections, and stent maybe short segment and yeah. dosing the SFA and possibly the CTO distally. And the Especially given as the bad port, here's the proximal portion. Stents do pretty well there. Yeah, and considering we went probably seven, I'd place a stent in that proximal segment and then. No, no problems doing that as well. So, Jihad, we're going to go ahead and deploy that stent under ultrasound guidance. We're going to flare it in the common femoral artery and drag it into the ostium of the SFA. I think that would be really nice to show how we do it. Are you using What's a drug looting stent, Fatty? No, this is a regular stent. Uh, this is actually the uh, Medtronic uh, 5 French system stent, Evercross. You guys, can I have a. Um, a short Fetty, Fetty, why don't you use a Stellarex? Um, Actually, no, never, never mind, never mind. DCV uh, and uh, use a Stellarex yeah. balloon. In the rest of the segments, that would, that, that would be, uh, especially the distal CTO cap. We have a long Stellarex. I would even consider open. it in the proximal. So I mean, just use a Stellarex and then place a self-expanding yeah. stent. On top of it? Yeah. Good idea, yeah. But, but that brings up a good question. So, you know, there was a paper showing that there was no significant difference whether you used the drug looting st or the drug coated balloon before or after stent placement. So you could actually use the drug coated balloon yet. after stent implantation. Is that correct? I think that's, I think that's what um, someone published. I thought after a stent wasn't that good. I mean, do you know anything about it? I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. Typically, I do it before, but yeah, um, yeah, I thought sure there was no, no difference. Yeah. Up to there. So, so I think our approach would approach oh, be to apply the drug first, and if there's a technical issue, place a stent or whatever kind of metal, even it's a spot stent or a deck or whatever. So. In fact, I'm glad you're going to stand. Look at the recoiling that already has happened. Yeah. Flip it. And let's pull this just a hair. Okay. Very good call. Okay. So, so had, nice uh, to have the tools we uh, have you now. You can see. You don't you have this. You can see the tip of uh, yeah. my stent. We do, Fatty. This is really intriguing, and actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flower the, I'm gonna flower the stent here or flare the stent here. Hold on, before you flare, it, Fatty. Isn't that a little bit? Okay, go ahead. It's really nice. Go. Keep flaring. 
Gosh, you're giving us a stroke here. It's, it look, looks very nice. And I'm just pulling it slightly back. Beautiful. That's it. That's good enough. Go. Oh, stop, please. Because I have to fix it, you know, when <laughs> things don't go well. It's... That was really eloquent. Yeah, eloquent. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, let's have the five-o balloon first. The same five-o balloon. Why don't you go with the six-o balloon? Why do you want to post that with a five? Uh, we're just no. I just want to treat the stent, and then we're gonna go with the stellar X balloon. I mean, uh, Dr. Walker, would you post that the stent with a five-o or six-o? I'd probably use the six. Six-o, very. Even. Do we have um, Stellar X? Uh, go ahead, open the Stellar X 120. Yeah. F Fetty, why, you wanna, why do you want to post it to stand with the 5 uh, balloon? No, I, w I was going to just make sure that uh, it's, uh, it's well expanded and then, and then give a drug there. So, yeah. But we're going to go ahead and do the Stellar X. Meanwhile, can I, let's take a picture. Go ahead, to, to, to do color, uh, Ben. We, we don't color like Doppler the there. way the stand looks, Fetty. Uh, it needs to be, uh, needs some attention. Uh, so Ben tells, Ben tell, Ben tells me that we, we actually covered the ostium of a profunda. See that? Um, well, Brian is not happy with that. That's not true. It's, yeah, gonna, it's still going to be okay you, because, you, <laughs> let me, <laughs> Dr. Mustafa is trying to put words in my mouth. Okay. We young folks have to speak, stick together. Yeah, so so fatty, so I got you. Okay. I think with that stent being the size that it is, I don't think there's any real risk of uh, hurting the profunda at all. Let's take a picture. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture before we post that late with the Stellar X. So, Fetty, the Stellar X is going to be below the stunt? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I'm actually going to, going to put it on top of a stent. Isn't that what you guys wanted? No, no, we thought that there's data that supports the Fetty, but the data is not. The data is to use the Stellar X first, then the stunt. But you can use the Stellar X in a distal area. Picture? So, uh, Jihad, would you like to say something? Like you're sorry? He's going to say, beautiful. I'm going to speak for him. Fatty, you're amazing. Well, well let's be honest. <laughs> Is it the section distal to the stent right there? Or maybe oh a thrombus or something? It's, uh, you're hopeless. You're hopeless. And the stent is under deployed. All right, so I would, like to, use, get, yeah, I would like to use this. Uh, would you guys like us to uh, treat from uh, the SFA to the popliteal with the uh, DCB? What do you guys I, think? I think that's a good idea. You, you should, Fadi, after all this work that you've done. Yeah. Right. And then please post I let uh, the last team uh, the stand. I just would like to point out that uh, you uh, wanted us to cover the ostium of a profunda. Just want to put it out there. Three. Fetty, why don't you just yeah, put an Olivia stent um, at the ostium? And would, the data on that is phenomenal, and you would have had long-term patency. Actually, actually, yeah, it would it would have been uh, it would have been great. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have it here. We're in the process of getting it here. We do have all the we do have all the atherectomy devices and all the DCB balloons, quite frankly. Um, so we have we have five minutes uh, left. I would like to really post dilate the stand, show you a final image, uh, and probably do the rest of the work in the popliteal. Um, Actually, Fetty, you know we, we might be able to see everything. I Man, go ahead. You're doing really well. We have time. Five. We only have five minutes yet. I don't know if they can get us more time. If you guys can get us more time, that would be great. Down. Five. Fetty, um, I think uh, George and Dr. Brown just found a trial. It's called the uh, Penelux trial. And that trial 
says that the package tax of drug order balloons after bare metal stents implantation is an alternative treatment for, to drug order drug balloon stents in high Two, three. Uh, bleeding risk patients. So, um, Four. if you want to still use um, drug balloon balloon here, you can. So, uh, we found the trial, the Penelux trial. Have another balloon. Six one twenty, please. Yeah. And down. Fadi, we got you additional five minutes. Uh, this is a phenomenal case. Okay, I will awesome. and see the final results. So can, can you work a little faster? Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to inflate the balloon a certain time for them to be effective, right? Weren't you one of the co-PIs that talked about that? So it's, three minutes. Aren't you the PI minutes. for uh, Latonix PTK? Dr. Broderman, please say something. You were with him. No, three minutes. You should leave it up three minutes, and then the other one three minutes. Okay. So that takes time. There is so no, there is no way settle, to uh, hurry up. Two minutes. No. I mean, you okay. are you are the PI for the trial for crying out loud. So three minutes. Follow the instructions of yours. Are they still alright? Three the, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no point of discussion. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Robin. Thank From you. the expert. <laughs> yes. Case closed. You know, this is the discussion now, Kefla. You know, how, how is the job market in Europe? It's the same, you know. My boys don't want to use TCPs because it takes such a long time. Boys are bad boys. They're bad boys, yes. I'm showing up. Well, look, so look he didn't go up to nominal three. right away, so he should have been up to nominal right away, right? So, this is, a, this is a four millimeter vessel uh, um, uh, that uh, I'm trying to be very kind to. While you're sitting in Chicago, I don't want to be putting covered stents here. <laughs> so, pray a few, Dr. Broadman, uh, what is he supposed to do? Deliver the stent outside the balloon as less than 30 seconds, inflate immediately upon arrival, Go to nominal immediately and leave for two minutes. <laughs> you have contrast, yeah, good. So this way, our block. Did you change that AFU so. recently? Yeah. <laughs> All right, three minutes, good. So, Fadi, two minutes or three minutes, whatever you want, it's up to you. But not Th one Three minute. minutes uh, would be great. No, two, yeah, Dr. Uh, Brown uh, is going to let you do it for, three, for two minutes. Thank you. Um, we're uh, we're almost at two minutes here. Uh, but but Fadi, why is you still have a waste? Is that is that the CTO cap um, location? Yeah, that's the CTO cap there. So maybe you need maybe a stent there just to cover the distal portion. Well, I mean, if we have a dissection, if we have a dissection and we covered it with a DCB balloon. Um, what if you guys think we need to put a stent, we'll put a stent. Why not look at it with Ibis, since you have it there, and see what it looks like, see how much luminal gain, see what the dissection looks like. We have Ibis, and we decision. can check velocities also with Evis. That's a good point. Let's, let's check it with ultrasound and see if there's high velocity. All right, so let's start with pictures here, and uh, let me show you the final images. Ready? Okay, that, that looks great. It hurts to say, but it looks good. I'm sorry, was that a compliment? A little compliment, but you worked hard for it. It's really good. But we're not done yet. That's cool. See that area there, that recoil, maybe we need to put a stent there. That will make Dr. Brown. Let me happy. show you that. 
Let me show you the tip. That, that's probably where the, where the distal CTO cap was. But let me show you the tibial runoff. And we're probably going to break off, but uh, ready? Inject. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, that, lo that looks awesome. great. We so, Fed, if you're going to stunt, why don't you just cover that recoiled area all the way to the CTO cap? Yeah, I, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know if we have time to show you guys or not. No, but you do. We have five minutes, Fed. How ahead. long it takes to put a stunt in? What do you like? Um, no comment. Somebody give you a six by 200 stunt and let's go? Is that what you think? Yeah. Okay. Six by 200 by Dr. Broadman. Do you get, do we have a 6 0 by 200 guys, 5 French? 6 0 by 200, 5 French. So you, so you do a prolonged post dilatation to treat this segment or? I'm just, I'm just pre uh, ballooning it again. I don't mm. want the stent to get stuck there mm. while we're getting it for, while we're getting the stent for us. Yeah, six O by two hundred stent. Fadi, who's circling? Who's here. doing the circulation for you? Who's circling for you? Uh, Lauren is not doing a good job. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Mustafa? Yeah, she's not. Is, uh, is it, I don't I see will the make stent, sure so that she uh, know. I don't see the stent opened, and it's not in the how table. About, uh, how about six O by one seventy, Lauren? We have a six French sheaf. You guys can get us a six French uh, stent. Typically, we have a lot of the five French stents in our lab here because uh, we do a lot of assisted TAMIs. But uh, we're working on getting uh, the stent here. Since you're going to stent this, air, this area, what, what atmospheric pressure are you at right now? Uh, I'm at 10. Uh, George, how high would you go if you know that you're going to stent this? And then you saw that Max, max pressure. Max. Max, I'm not go, I'd go hard. 200, let me have a 200, guys. Same. Same. Would you go to rupture? Would, not, I wouldn't rupture it, but I would go at least a rated burst. No, it's a rated burst, I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say, okay. This is great, Fatty, we still have three minutes. I think we can see the stand being deployed and uh, an angiogram. Open it. I mean, you did pretty good. I mean, he did a pretty good job. <laughs> Open a CTO, DCB, stand, atherectomy, IVUS in an hour. Not bad. Good job. Tough case. Yeah, excellent job. You know, we're, uh, we're really looking for so some feedback from our audience because uh, I got to give credit to Dr. Mustafa and the steering committee for AMP because we really insist on showing real world cases, uh, tough CTOs as much as we can, which easier said than done. So having one hour time is, uh, is a challenge, but we hope that uh, everybody can see the value of uh, us featuring these difficult cases. Fadi, I just told I just told Jihad we're still hiring in Louisiana. Oh, I would love to go there. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, Dr. Walker, I will pay you half his salary if you take him. <laughs> Jihad, I could get used to this. We could sit up here and Fadi could do our cases and we could critique him. This is really nice. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That'd be awesome. I, I okay, the beauty look. of floss here again. Okay, then uh, let's, let's do a picture, guys. You should have had the balloon coming from above right away, like Ryan said earlier. That's what I would have done. I think physical violence is frowned upon. But I'm really considering it. This is awesome. Nice. So you're, you're going to post it, and it's going to look great. But yeah, and on a serious note, we all want to thank you for the three cases today because no one chooses this kind of cases in life cases. You chose a very complex CTO's B, uh, BTK above the knee and this uh, flush occlusion. Uh, don't you agree, Craig? Dude, great job. 
Really, really great job. Thank, thank you so you much, very much guys. for doing that. It was that. really and a privilege and an honor to do it. Thanks. Thank you from all of us here at ACV, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.